How's it going guys? Today we're taking a step into another non-Gundam realm. This is the Arbalest kit version 4 from Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory. Full Metal Panic, I'll let you guys know just right off the bat, is a series that I have no experience with. I've never watched it at all. Uh, I just think this is, these are some cool looking mechs. So Bandai came out with recently a set of three different ones, the Arbalest, as well as two different versions of the Gernsback. I'll be reviewing all three of them for you guys because I think they look really cool. And I just want to say a big thing you did big thank you to USA Gundam Store, as always, for sponsoring these reviews. So big thank you to them. Guys, do check out the link to their site down below and uh, use their store and use my coupon code there, Zaku Release 10, save 10%. So these are a uh, really cool box art, first off. Let's just take a minute to acknowledge that. Second thing, these are 160 scale kits. You may be thinking like, oh, that's a pretty small kit for a 160 scale kit. You, you normally think of like perfect rate, right? Well, these are just different size mechs, like in reality. I'm not sure, actually sure how big they are actually in the series, but you can tell just kind of by, by the size of the cars here. They're not that big, so. If I had to guess, maybe like four or five meters compared to a Gundam, which is 18 meters. So yeah, these are going to be probably about the size of a high grade. I would imagine seeing as how this is basically the size of a high grade box, but they do look really, really nice, really nicely detailed. And you guys know it's Bandai, so they, they know what they're doing, but let's get into it. So here on the side of the box, we've got just kind of the main thing. They're not putting any numbering system to these, so I'm guessing maybe the three that they're releasing are the only three that they're gonna be releasing, kind of like what they recently did with Pacific Rim. They released just three kits from the Pacific Rim movie, uh, and I don't really expect they're gonna do any more. I would assume it would be kind of the same thing with these. They're gonna put out these three, and then that's just kind of gonna be it. But who knows, maybe if they sell really like gangbusters, then we might see something in a, like a larger scale or something. I don't know what exactly that would be, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, so here on the bottom of the box, you can see just an action pose there with the knife. Over here we got just some gimmicks talking about, I guess, just the, the kind of me mechanism in the hip unit, I guess. And then it has the Lambda driver. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but uh, that's something, I guess, again, just related to the anime. I couldn't tell you, but it has the knife, which connects onto the face. That's always been an interesting feature about these mechs that I, that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, it has this gun here, which is, it says a light defense weapon. It says an armament is unique to this plastic model kit, newly designed. Uh, is included so it's just that and then it looks like it maybe also comes with like the shotgun style weapon as well over around here onto the back just a little thing there about the anime itself here it is pictured with the two Gernsback kits it looks like there uh, front and rear view just kind of small images of what the kit is going to look like when it's all painted up uh, relatively simple I mean it's, it doesn't have like any big crazy backpack or anything or anything too complicated but it does look very very nicely detailed and the color separation looks does also look quite nice 2800 yen for the list price of this now that is something we'll have to see if it lives up to that price because as you guys can see this is about the same size as a box of like a standard iron blood orphan kits and those sold for around 1200 yen so being about like th triple the price of that yeah we'll see but just by first glance i can tell the parts there's definitely a lot of small parts in this so it's going to be maybe a little bit more along the lines of a real grade in terms of its parts complexity it does look like there's a lot of small parts and a lot of really fine detail. So another thing too is that I'm guessing that like with Pacific Rim, like with Bandai's Star Wars kits, those are also kits that are a little bit more expensive compared to Gundam because Bandai Sunrise owns Gundam. They don't have to pay for any property rights for that. With stuff like this, they have to you have to add that into the cost that Bandai's paying for uh, the rights to use this. So that's another reason why these kits will be a little bit more expensive of other different properties. Uh, but that's just one thing. We do have a very small sticker sheet though. So as you can see, a lot of different parts there and we have a very small sticker sheet. So that means that you'll have a lot of really nice color separation in this. That is definitely a good sign. Okay, let's take a look at the manual here. Again, there's the box art once again, looking very cool now that we're kind of seeing that more close up. Very, very nicely painted. Let's check who that's by Yamamoto Hiroyuki. So, so that's some artwork. I wonder if he's also doing some of the artwork for some of the Gunpla releases for Bandai. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and check some of those boxes, but I'm really bad at paying attention to people's names and things like that. But anyway, Arm Slave Recognition Guide here, and then just the ARX7 at the bottom, Arbalest version 4. On the back, there's a whole bunch of information. I guess I should probably read this to learn a little bit about what I'm talking about, but if you guys want to read that, you can pause the video there, hopefully 
that is enough. You guys can check that out. Looks like you can create this weapon, but for this you need some parts from the Gernsback. So it looks like, like if you buy all three kits, you can kind of put stuff together uh, to form some different weapons. So that's pretty cool. It's got a little thing there saying like, you get the center part with this kit, but some of those other parts come with the other two kits. So that's interesting. You do also get, it looks like maybe these other weapons, which is just kind of uh, AK-47 sort of looking gun there and then the shotgun sort of looking gun. And then the two kind of knives, this large one and this smaller one. I believe the smaller one is probably the one that attaches onto the face. Uh, down here, a little bit about the Soldier of Fortune. Again, that would be about the pilot, I suppose. And then the color guide there in just kind of navy blue, grays, and then a couple different small little bits of color here and there, but really not the most colorful thing in the world. Here we have our parts list. And as you can see, we've got a couple of parts that are not going to be used basically because those runners are doubled. It's like two of the A runner. Uh, you don't need doubles of those. And the same thing here with the C runner. Otherwise, you're going to be using everything except for a few of the polycaps. Using the same polycaps that we see with uh, most modern high grades as well. So that's interesting. So the construction starts off with the body first, then the head, then the arms, arms, legs, legs. The body is done there with the waist. And then flipping back around to the color pages has the weapons. Those are going to be pretty simple, just a couple parts each. It looks like nothing really too complicated. Uh, and then just kind of the armaments and everything. Oh, here's about the Lambda driver. So you have to kind of replace a few parts for that. I guess it's kind of like just to open some stuff up for the shoulders and the backpack, some bits open up. And that does look pretty cool. And then about just the waist, how to kind of manipulate the waist section there to make it be able to kneel down like this. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's get into it here. Once again, is that photo sticker sheet, just one, two, three, four little stickers on here. These two white ones, one there for the eyes. This one, again, not really too sure, but it's very minimal. That's good. PC002 for our polycap runner here. Very familiar with this one at this point. And then we have runner A, so this is in like kind of dull navy blue color. It's quite nice. As one thing you'll notice too is that all the runners for this kit are in this kind of smaller size. We don't have any of the fuller, uh, like full size runners that we normally see with HG kits. And the other thing I want to point out is the marking for this is 160 scale arm slave. So I'm guessing that maybe this runner is copied for the Gernsback kits as well, but we'll see. Oh, and also we do have two of this A runner. Runner B here in white, once again, also simply marked 160 scale arm slave. Uh, a bunch of really nicely detailed parts on here. Very cool. Runner C here molded in this kind of metallic gloss injected sort of dark gray color. Sort of basically what we get with a lot of Bandai inner frames and things like that these days. It's not quite as brown, I think maybe, but it's very close to that. So we got two of this C runner as well. And then runner D is some more of that. We can see there's our hands. Looks like we have holding hands and open hands, some weapons parts on there, and then a few more kind of inner working parts here. Runner E is back to white, but we're still running on the same marking of 160 scale arm slave for this. So uh, nothing that's been specifically marked for the arbalest at least anyway. And here we have two of this E runner. Runner F still carrying the same arm slave marking. This one is in a new color though. This is uh, like a very light grayish purple color. It looks very nice. The runner G though is back to that kind of mechanical dark gray color for parts for the shotgun and a few more little parts on there. I'm guessing it's probably just all weapons parts. This runner, however, is our first to be specifically marked for the Arbalest. And then it also goes here for runners H1 and H2, which you'll see are is in that kind of dark navy color, and then a few yellow parts here as well. These are also marked specifically for the Arbalest. So I guess just the last three are the only ones marked specifically for the Arbalest. So that's it for the unboxing. And one thing that I'll point out, while the runners are smaller, it is pretty, you know, for a box this size to be counting up in runners all the way up to uh, H in the alphabet, uh, we usually get like A, B, C, D, maybe E, F, I guess it depends if it's like a variant or something. But I think there is a fair amount of parts in there to be sure. Uh, but still, the price is a little bit on the higher end. I will still wonder about that. But no doubt it is going to be super high quality. I think it doesn't have like the same inner frame and everything like a real grade would have, but it definitely seems more complex than your standard HG. Either way, I think this is going to be a really cool kit. I'm looking forward to checking this out. And then after this, we'll also be checking out the two different versions of the Gernsback as well. So we'll see, so the, see those guys do leave your questions and comments down below. I'm sure plenty of you guys know a lot more about the series than I do. So fill me in in the comment section down below. I always read the comments. So uh, let me know what I should know about this. And as always, thank you just so much for watching. Check the link down below at USA Gundam Store, and I'll see you guys in the review. Bye bye. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code Zakurilius10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye bye.